He said, that bathroom solution smells terrible. It's very strong. And I was like, no, I can't smell it at all. It smells like water. And then I realized I have no sense of smell. Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Mama Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN. I recently was diagnosed with COVID-19. During the course of my illness, I realized we're not doing a very good job of telling people what to expect during outpatient or non-hospitalized treatment and getting over COVID-19 at home. As I sat there one night texting my friend, I thought, what are people who have this and don't have these resources doing to get these questions answered? Because I know they must have some of the same questions that I have. So today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my experience with COVID-19, and I'm going to be asking some questions to Dr. Jamie Rutland, who is a very good in real life friend of mine. Hey everybody, I'm Cedric Jamie Rutland. I'm a pulmonary critical care physician in Southern California. I do have my own practice, West Coast Lung, and I am on many social media platforms as Dr. J Rutland. He also has a YouTube channel if you'd like to check him out. It is called Medicine Deconstructed, and I will put the link in the description below. So I first noticed that I was having some symptoms of congestion and a headache, and I really didn't think a whole lot of it. I have bad allergies. You probably have seen on this channel. Sometimes I have terrible red nose and bags under my eyes because my allergies get bad often, and I just didn't think anything of it. I got on a conference call for Association of Healthcare Social Media, which is a 501c3 nonprofit that I co-founded and I'm on the executive board of, and Dr. Jamie Rutland, who's going to be answering some of my questions in a minute, was also on that call. I said, you know, I'm just not feeling well, it's allergies, and he's like, you might have COVID. And I was like, I don't, I don't think it's COVID. I don't feel that bad. And he said, I think you should consider getting tested. So I was thinking about it after we got off the phone and I was considering getting tested, but again, we weren't going anywhere. I wasn't working in the next few days. So I just decided to kind of let it play out. The next day I was cleaning our bathroom and I have very significant asthma. I've been on inhaled corticosteroids my whole life. It's much less than it used to be, but it's still significant. I control it really well because I know my triggers. I know it's exercise induced, I know it's cold induced, and I know it's volatile chemical induced. So if I, if I get in an enclosed space with volatile chemicals like cleaning solutions, and I'm there for a long time, it will often trigger my asthma, so I have to be very careful about that. So I was cleaning the bathroom and it was with a new cleaning solution that I've never used, and then I finished and I was like, I cannot breathe. And I was, you know, doing the whole trying to breathe thing and my husband walked in and he said, are you okay? And I said, I just, I can't breathe. I'm having a horrible time breathing and I don't know why. And he said, well, that bathroom cleaner is extremely volatile. You need to take your asthma medicine. You're having an asthma attack. And I said, no, I know what an asthma attack feels like. I have had asthma my whole life. I'm not even around a trigger, nothing even smells. And he said, that bathroom solution smells terrible. It's very strong. And I was like, no, I can't smell it at all. It smells like water. And then I realized I have no sense of smell. I couldn't smell anything, not even the volatile chemical that I was cleaning our bathroom with. So I took my asthma medicine and sure enough, my symptoms went away almost immediately. I was having an asthma attack and I rely so much on my known triggers that I didn't even know it was asthma despite knowing what an asthma attack feels like because I couldn't tell that the trigger had happened. So at that point I was like, well, now I have this congestion and a headache and Jamie has, Dr. Rutland has already told me I need to get tested. Now my sense of smell is completely gone. I definitely need to get tested. So I made an appointment and went to get tested at one of the drive through testing centers close to us. I went and the test was not enjoyable, but it wasn't terrible. It's not fun, but it should not keep you from being tested if you have any concerns about exposure or symptoms. I got tested and it took about two days to get my results back and sure enough, I was positive for COVID-19. In those two days, I had pretty well decided I am positive because I continue to have absolutely no sense of smell and absolutely no sense of taste. So I self-quarantined away, I didn't leave the house at all. In those two days before my test came back, my husband also started having symptoms and the day my test came back, he also lost his sense of smell and taste. So we both had COVID-19. I never had high fevers. A couple of times I had maybe 101 temp. It was short-lived, it went away quickly. I felt okay except for being really exhausted for like three days in that time frame. And once I got to about five days out from my first symptoms, I thought, okay, I'm getting better, 
this is fine. I have a really mild case. Thank goodness we're good. But the next day and over the course of about four days after that, my breathing was very bad. It wasn't asthma problems. I didn't feel like my asthma was having trouble, but I have a pulse oximeter at home. And I noticed that both myself and my husband were regularly having oxygen saturations from about 90 to 93. After those days of my low oxygen sats, we had one day, both my husband and I on the same day, where we were having oxygen stats in the mid 80s to high 80s when we were active, getting up, moving around, going up the stairs would drop our oxygen sats pretty low. I think probably in hindsight, we should have used that to indicate we need to go into the hospital or clinic. Um, but doctors are the worst patients and I decided, well, we're okay. We're going to write it out at home. Every day after that was a little bit better. I finally started feeling better and now I'm several weeks out and I'm still having some lower oxygen sats than normal. So I don't know if that will recover with time or never. Hopefully it will with time, um, but it's definitely still there. And that being said, I don't have any other symptoms still. My sense of taste gradually came back. It is not all the way back, but it is a little better and same with sense of smell. So all of those things are gradually improving. I'm really thankful that we had a mild case, even having really mild case, it was terrible, way worse than the flu. We were just really sick for about 10 days. And after that, still not super well. So I'm thankful that we had mild cases, but I really want the take home point from this video or from me sharing my story, other than the questions that Dr. Rutland's gonna answer for us to be, this is a serious illness. I have had the flu before and it was nothing like the flu. I felt terrible for a long time and it was really scary for a few days. So I want you guys to know I, I don't think after having this that even though I wasn't hospitalized and even though I am feeling mostly better now, I don't think that I would compare this to the flu. There were a few days where I felt like I had the flu, but there were a few days that were really scary and much more significant than any flu I've ever had. So that's my story of having COVID-19. Now I wanna ask Dr. Rutland some questions that I had come up in the time that I was sick and get his opinion on outpatient care for people with COVID-19. The results didn't give me a lot of information. And since I had been tested at a drive through clinic, I didn't have a doctor I could call to ask questions to. So I was wondering maybe if you could tell us, Dr. Rutland, what kind of symptoms we should be looking for when we're being taken care of outpatient that would prompt a visit to the outpatient clinic or a visit to an emergency room and how we know if one of those things needs to happen. That's a very common question, and I appreciate that question. The symptoms that should prompt you to visit the emergency room include shortness of breath, chest pain, very high fever, over 38.3, 38.4, and other types of symptoms that you don't think that you can handle at home. If you have a symptom early on, and that symptom decides to get worse, that's when you need to visit the emergency department so that we can best treat you, and we all understand and know that the earlier we treat you, probably the better off you are. Yeah, that's super helpful. So would those things be about the same for kids if parents are wondering like, what should I be watching for in my child? Children are gonna display similar symptoms as adults. They're gonna have cough. They're gonna have shortness of breath. They're gonna have fever. They're gonna have fatigue. And in fact, when you look at children, one of the symptoms that I pay the most attention to is that fatigue. When your child is not acting like themselves, that's when you have to be a little bit worried that they're getting sick or even sicker. That's super helpful. I want to add in here that these are just general guidelines. If you are worried, you need to call and talk to your doctor or someone who is close to you in your vicinity, a clinic or a hospital and get their immediate opinion on the problem that you're having. I just wanted to make this video to have some general guidance for people who are sick at home and have questions and don't know where to get answers. So that being said, Dr. Rutland, if someone is at home and they have a question like that, who would be the best person for them to call? You know, when people are at home sick, whether it's an adult or whether it's a child, you want to know who you're going to call. In this case, if you have the luxury of having access to healthcare, you have a primary care physician. 
That's who I would always call first because that physician is probably the physician you see most often and is going to know you or your child the best. So when that happens, that's who I would call. So super helpful. Yeah, you can call your doctor, you can call a nurse line, you can call the hospital. And if you got diagnosed in a clinic, you can definitely call that clinic as well. If it's an emergency or you're having difficulty breathing, chest pain, things like that, you need to call an ambulance. So I would say that my most bothersome symptom while I was sick was just feeling exhausted. And obviously the only cure for that is resting and letting your body do its job to fight off the virus and get you well. But my husband had very severe throat pain and I had a pretty bad headache for most of the days. What are some over-the-counter medications that are either safe or not safe to take while you are sick with COVID-19. That's another common question that we get all the time. Any medicine that's gonna reduce your fever, reduce your pain, reduce the symptoms that you're feeling, even cough suppressants, they're all gonna help. I use Dayquil, I use NyQuil, I use Tylenol. What you wanna watch out for when you're looking at these over-the-counter medicines is you do not want to double dose, that is, there's Tylenol in NyQuil, and then there's also Tylenol. So you want to be weary of that. You want to understand that a lot of these over-the-counter remedies have the same ingredients. Just look at the back of those ingredients and make sure the ingredients are different. That way, you can give your organs a little bit of a relief and allow them to clear the medicines appropriately, and you can take them every six hours or every four hours or as indicated. Excellent. So I think this is maybe one of the most important questions. When someone gets a diagnosis of COVID-19, how long should they stay quarantined and away from other people? When you're symptomatic with SARS-CoV-2, generally what we'll say is quarantine for 10 days after your onset of symptoms. If your symptoms continue, then yes, that will of course change. If you're asymptomatic and you have no symptoms whatsoever of the presence of the virus within your body and you just took a test because you were around somebody that had it, what we say is from the moment of that positive test, we say 10 days of quarantine. That is, don't be around anyone else, don't have any close contacts, try to stay in your room. That's what we want because we want to help stop the spread of this disease all over the world. And you also wanna be able to identify who actually is a close contact. You're within six feet for 15 minutes or more within a 24 hour period. Those are the people that are considered close contacts if they have COVID-19. And so you have to quarantine yourself if you are one of those people that's within that six feet for 15 minutes or more. Okay, great. Well, those are the guidelines that we followed and I appreciate you sharing them with my audience here as well. That brings me to my next question. When I was finally starting to feel well and I was out of quarantine, I was wondering, you know, when is it safe for me to go back to doing my normal activities? When can I go running? When can I go skiing? Things like that. So what would you say to someone who is wondering, when can I get back to my normal activities? If you're asking me that question as your physician, I'd say you can go back to it right now. You can go ahead and exercise. You can get on that Peloton. You can get on that track. Whatever it is that you do that makes you feel good about yourself, go ahead and do it. Once you're through this illness, if you're coming to my clinic and you're asking me, that means that you're ready in my mind. You might have a little bit less stamina than before. That's okay. That's normal. You'll build back up. You'll fight through that but also know that exercise is important for your mental state and it's also important for your immune system that allows your immune system to be efficient and to function properly. Interesting, all right. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Rutland, for being here. Please know that this video is not a substitute for medical advice from your doctor. I just wanted to get a little bit of information out there so that people who are sitting at home and wondering these questions like I was, will be able to have some answers at least a little bit. COVID-19 guidelines and regulations are rapidly changing. Know that this is up to date to the best of our ability as of the day of upload, but that things could change and I'll do my best to update you if something like that happens. If you want more of me, Dr. J. Rutland, you can find me on Instagram at Dr. J. Rutland, D-R-J-R-U-T-L-A-N-D. You can also find me on YouTube at Medicine Deconstructed. 
Thanks for being here today, Dr. Rutland. Medicine Deconstructed is linked in the description box below. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the pinned comment below and I will see you next time.